Hey there and welcome back to my channel. Authentic has several methods of authentication and authorization built in, and one of those is OAuth and OIDC. Uh, well I guess no one really calls it that, but I'm referring to OIDC or OpenID Connect, and that is what I'll be going over in this video, sponsored by Authentic Security. As usual, navigate and log in to your main Authentic page. Once logged in, click on Admin Interface. As I stated in one of my other videos, I don't like using the default flows and instead I like to make my own for my different processes. The reason for this is if you have several processes using any of the default flows but want to customize one of your processes by modifying that one default flow, all of your other processes relying on that same default flow will also change. If however you purposely want to synchronize changes, you can skip this flow creation step. Otherwise, click on flows to expand it. And the custom flow I want to create is an authorization flow. I will click edit on default provider authorization implicit consent flow just so I can get an idea of how it is set up. For me, I'm concerned with the title and how it uses the percent app variable, the designation, and authentication. Okay, everything else is fine, so I'll go ahead and click Cancel. Now, click on Create. Give your flow a name in the name field. For instance, I will enter Kuptonian Application Authorization. And for title, I'll name it the same in proper title casing. But don't worry, you don't have to. The slug is already pre-filled for us from the title we entered. For designation, click and choose authorization. And for authentication, choose require authentication. Click the arrow for behavior settings to expand it. I like to make sure my setup is as compatible as possible, so I will go ahead and enable compatibility mode. If it causes issues, you can always go back and disable it. If you've already customized the look of your Authentic instance, be sure to click Appearance Settings to expand it and make any changes to keep it cohesive with your setup. I, for example, will change the background. Then click Create. And our non-default authorization flow is now created. Next. Click on Applications to expand it. Click on Providers. Then click Create. Click and choose OAuth2 slash OpenID Provider. And click Next. Enter a name for your provider. I'll make it simple for myself by naming it the same as the application we're trying to set up and type in Portainer. For Authentication Flow, choose your main authentication flow or the default one if you didn't make one. I already have one in there from a previous video, so I will pick that. For authorization flow, choose the flow we just created, or again, choose one of the default ones. Also, be sure confidential is selected for the client type. Scroll down and make note of the client ID and client secret. We'll need these later. Since I based my authorization flow to be implicit, I will go ahead and enter the fully qualified domain address of my Portainer instance under the redirect URIs slash origin section. Next, for sign-in key, click and choose one of the self-signed certificates, unless you created your own. Expand advanced protocol settings and change any of these length of times to suit your purposes. I'll leave mine at default. Under scope, note the labels in single quotes that say email, open ID, and profile. They are the same ones referenced in the documentation. We'll need these later. Scrolling down, we really don't need to change anything else, so click on finish. Our provider is now created, but notice the yellow triangle exclamation warning it's because we don't have an application signed to this provider yet. So click on Applications, and click Create, enter the name of your application, 
for this video, it's Portainer. I'll enter the same for the slug. Enter a group if you're utilizing that function, otherwise skip it. For provider, click and choose the Portainer provider we just created. Then expand UI settings. And for the launch URL, enter the fully qualified domain address for your Portainer instance. Enable Open in New Tab if you want Portainer to open in a new browser tab. That's your preference. And make any other customizations here that will be reflected in the main Authentic App dashboard. I'll just enter a description for now. And click Create. Now, if we click back on Providers, we see the warning is gone. Next, click on Edit for this provider. and highlight and copy the client ID. Open a new browser tab and navigate to your Portainer login page and log in. Then click on Expand Settings. Click on Authentication and click on OAuth. Click on Use SSO. I don't have the business edition of Portainer, but if you do, you can enable this and hide the internal authentication prompt so you don't have the two options on the login page. Next, click and enable automatic user provisioning. This is great because if your Portainer currently only has the one main internal user, but you plan on giving access to other users that currently have user accounts in Authentic, this will create those same users in Portainer. If you already have other internal users in Portainer, then you may have to leave the hide internal authentication prompt disabled so those users can still log in or manually add those users into Authentic to allow them to use OAuth as well. I'll talk about default teams later in the video. Now scroll down and paste the client ID we copied from the Portainer provider into the client ID field. Then jump back to the Authentic tab and highlight and copy the client secret. Jump back to the Portainer tab and paste it into the client secret field. Now we have to do the same copy and paste for all these URL fields. Jump back to the Portainer tab again, click cancel, and this time click on the Portainer provider. These are all the URLs we will be copy and pasting into Portainer. So let's jump back to Portainer and check the first URL we need. It's the authorization URL. So you know the drill, jump back, copy, jump back, paste, rinse and repeat until all the URL fields are entered. I won't bore you so I'll speed through this part. For redirect URL, again, enter your fully qualified domain address for Portainer. Remember way earlier in the video in the provider settings we saw something about scope and those three labels, email, open ID, and provider? Well, that is the info we are entering here for user identifier and scopes. And per the documentation, it says note, Portainer by default shows commas between each item in the scopes field. Do not use commas. Use a space. So back at Portainer, enter email for the user identifier. And enter email, space, open ID, space, profile for the scopes field. Finally, click on Save Settings. Scroll to the top and log out of Portainer. As you can see, we now have a new login with OAuth option. And here's the Use Internal Authentication option that can be hidden with the Business Edition. Let's test this out by jumping back to the Authentic tab and click to log out. I'll now log in as Lex Luthor, my other authentic user. Mr. Luthor is not currently bound to any groups, and I currently do not have any policies for Portainer, so he has access to all applications. This is why he has Portainer listed in his app dashboard. If you click on more details, we'll see the description we entered for the application. Even though Mr. Luthor has Portainer listed here, he does not yet exist in Portainer. So, if we click on Portainer, we are redirected to the Portainer login page. Then click on Login with OAuth. 
This then verifies with Authentic that Mr. Luthor is authorized to use Portainer and proceeds to redirect to Portainer to provision a new account and log him in. And bingo, we're in. Now if we click log out from Portainer, we're successfully logged out of Portainer, but still authenticated with Authentic, and we receive this logout page with three options. Clicking go back to overview sends us back to the app dashboard. Clicking back on Portainer shows us the Portainer login slash OAuth page because, again, we are technically logged out of Portainer. So, I will proceed to log in and log out to see what happens with the other two choices. Clicking on log back into Portainer, well, we need to log back in again because we logged out but still authenticated with Authentic. And one more time with logging in and logging out for the last option. Clicking log out of Kryptonian is a complete logout because you are now logged out of Portainer and Authentic and so no longer authenticated. So what happens if I open a new tab and navigate directly to Portainer? Well, I'm greeted with the same login with OAuth page and clicking it will send me to Authentic for authentication. You may have noticed there are no environments listed in my Portainer for Mr. Luthor. Well, this is the more Portainer-centric part of the video. Remember that default Teams I mentioned earlier? I'll go over that now. In fact, you may want to watch this part of the video first when you get to that earlier part of setting up OAuth in Portainer. Completely log out of Portainer and click on Use Internal Authentication to log back in with the main internal user account. Now you'll notice I have all my environments listed. But say I don't want Mr. Luthor to have access to all my environments and only want him to have access to one. First, let me remove him from the user's menu as if he never existed or logged in before. Now under user, click on teams. Enter a team name of your preference. I'll enter co-admin and click create team. If you click on your newly created team, you'll see you have no team members. If you click on roles, you can see how granular you can set user access if you're on the business edition. Although I only have access to the standard user role that has full control, I can at least still limit which environments are accessible. If you click in Expand Environments, you'll see the list of all your available environments. Now, click on Groups and click on Add Group. Give your group a name that makes sense for you. I'll enter Support. And optionally, give your group a description. Under Available Environments, click on all the environments you want this group to have access to. I only want Mr. Luthor to have access to Atlantis, so I'll click that to move it over to Associated Environments. And click Create Group. Next, click on Manage Access for the newly created group. For select users and or teams under the Create Access section, click and choose the team created earlier. Again, for role, we can be more granular on the business edition, but for now, it is on the default standard user. Then, click Create Access. And now, my co-admin team is listed under Access. Next, click and expand Settings. Click on Authentication. For default team under OAuth, we click and choose the team we created. Scroll down and click Save Settings. Finally, let's log out and test with Mr. Luthor. I'll test from the main Authentic login page, so I'll jump back to my Authentic tab and enter Mr. Luthor's credentials. As expected, we're presented with Portainer on the app dashboard. Click on Portainer, then click on Login with OAuth. 
And presto, we're in Portainer as Mr. Luthor, and he has access only to what we allowed with the group team association. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for any other videos I upload in the future. Thanks for watching.